Hey there, my fellow lunatics, and welcome to Dakin's Madhouse. Hey there, my fellow lunatics. I'm doing a giveaway. I've got a couple of codes for a free month of Xbox Game Pass, and if you want to play Core Keeper on Game Pass for free for a month, or maybe you've got a friend who won't commit to playing, then this is the giveaway for you. There's no cost to entry, just hit that subscribe button and leave a comment on any of my videos with the hashtag enter the madhouse and you'll be entered for a chance to win a free month of Xbox Game Pass. This competition will be running from August 26th until September 2nd. Winners will be announced shortly after. So enter the madhouse for a chance to win and we can all explore the caverns together. Hello everyone, and today we are talking character builds, specifically builds in the early game. During this time, your skills are low, your hit points are low, and the Malagaz boss fight is a significant challenge during this time. Now there are many different builds and different ways that you can take down Malagaz and move beyond the wall with ease. So here is one example. This build focuses on summoning. Let's get started. This build focuses on getting five summoned bats and then keeping them up as long as possible, as well as giving them as much strength as I possibly can, although the damage is secondary to keeping them up longer. First, we'll start off with the Witch Doctor hat. This item drops off of Shroomen in the dirt biome, and it increases our minion count by one. Next, we've got the Chieftain Tunic, and we've got the Chieftain Shorts. Both can be found by killing mobs in the clay caverns or by killing Gorm. The chest gives an additional minion and the set bonus by wearing two pieces of chieftain armor will add two more minions. Now for the necklace, the best item really is the skull necklace, but that drops off of Malagaz. So if you don't have that yet, I recommend the polished gold crystal necklace since that's something that you can craft. For rings, we have got the Hourglass Rings. Cavelings drop these in the Forgotten Ruins. The best offhand item in the game right now is going to be, well, it's actually the Blue Leather Tome, but that has the same issue as the Skull Necklace. If you have beaten Malagaz, you can craft this tome at his statue. If you haven't yet, then the Rift Lens is gonna be ideal, and this drops off of Glurch and Gorm. Now, when it comes to weapons, you're pretty much limited to using the Tome of Dark in the early game, which summons bats. The Tome of the Dead is the next book, and it doesn't drop until the Mold Dungeon, which is beyond the Great Wall. So for now, it's all about bats. If you didn't get a Tome for your starter class, then you can find these in crates within the Dirt Biome. The Warlock can benefit from a secondary attack since their minions attack independently. I recommend the Arcane Staff because of its low mana cost. However, the Iron Bow is also excellent for its speed and complete lack of a mana cost, letting you spend all of your mana on just resummoning the bats when needed. Finally, for the Lantern, it really doesn't matter what you put in your Lantern slot. I put a Pumpkin Lantern in mine because I like the health regen option, but the Pumpkin Lantern can only be acquired through the Halloween event, so you can activate the seasonal event and then get the Lantern that way. Or you can really just use any of the crafted Lanterns or other Lanterns that you find along the way. The choice is up to you. And then finally, for my bag, I use Gorm's Stomach Bag because it has the most inventory slots, and getting a health boost in the early game is always nice. However, this really doesn't matter much, so if you have a different bag that you prefer to wear, Wear any bag, they're not really part of the build. At this stage in the game, any pet that you have is going to help. However, I would personally avoid using the Ember Tail during the Malagaz fight, since Malagaz is immune to burn damage. Now, I found an Owl Lux early in a dirt biome crate, and I used that for most of my early game, though the dog is an excellent pet and I highly recommend that one if you find one. The orange slime is also good and works just fine. Really any of the early game pets are going to be a good choice. You're not going to go wrong. 
When it comes to skills, the early game fights are much more lenient and don't depend on the bonuses from skill points as heavily as later in the game. That being said, you are going to want to get your primary combat skill up into the 30s and 40s before fighting Malagas. The higher your vitality, the better as well. Now, personally, I recommend crafting a wood farm and building wooden items like torches or bridges to get to 100 crafting as quickly as possible. It takes about 15,000 wood to get to 100 crafting with bridges. And while that may seem like a lot, it's really not that much if you get a good wood farm going. You can probably get that much wood in about, I don't know, maybe eight to 12 hours. How you spend your skill points is entirely up to you. This early in the game, there really aren't a lot of options and really none of the combat skills are bad choices within the first two tiers. So you just, you really can't go wrong. I prefer focusing on skills that improve my damage and my attack speed first, but you really can focus on whichever ones work best for whatever build you're going for. Ah, bonjour, ça va? For tonight's Warlock dining experience, we have a four-course tasting menu. For our appetizer, I have a sharp tulip salad made with glow tulips and a dagger fin fish. This salad provides glow, minion damage, and mana regen. <laughs> Oh my god, that accent is so bad. Oh man, my French friends are gonna kill me for that one. Okay, I'm gonna stop because y'all deserve better. So, for our second course, I present to you a shiny meat steak made from marbled meat and shiny larva meat. When shiny larva meat is unavailable, regular larva meat may substitute. This dish provides a critical hit chance bonus as well as a damage bonus. Our main course of the evening is a glimmering pepper wrap made from artisan bomb peppers and succulent gem crab. This dish provides a movement speed boost as well as an armor bonus. And for dessert this evening, the hearty palace fish balls made from heartberry and teal palace fish. This dish provides a maximum health bonus and a ranged attack speed boost. To drink tonight, I will present you with several options. The Pact of Power Potion can provide a bonus to minion damage and is craftable at the alchemy table. Another craftable drink is the Stone Skin Potion, which provides an armor bonus. If you have a Moulin Farm, the Meadow Milk also provides an armor bonus, but it does not stack with stone skin. Finally, a gift from the winter holiday presents. The hot punch can provide a bonus to attack speed. This does not help your minions, but it will help you. And now that you've gorged yourself on buff foods, you could pay your bill by liking this video. And if you want to leave a tip, just hit that subscribe button. If you're feeling particularly generous, Join us on Patreon or become a YouTube member. There are links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this character build. Now this isn't the only way to get through the early game and I would love to hear how you've put your character together. So let me know in the comments. I hope this helps you with your early game builds and until next time, stay crazy.